Okay, so the first thing we're looking at is potential difference. So an electric sta an electrostatic charge, Q, has the potential to to do something. All right, but something has to happen. Some work has to happen on it in order for the charge to actually jump. Okay, so basically, when you have a battery, like take a nine volt battery for instance, you have two plates inside that nine volt battery, and one's got uh, electrons on it, one's got uh, protons on it. Okay, so those electrons have potential to do work. So once they are moved, once the work is done, and they've transferred over to the to the proton side, and it starts the electron flow. Okay. We have created potential difference. There's a difference in potential by moving the electron from one spot to another spot. Okay? And to figure out what your potential difference is, we've got it measured in V, which is volts. The amount of work that's required to move it divided by the amount of charge. Okay? So one volt a potential difference is equivalent to one joule of work over one coulomb of charge. Done. Okay. So far we're all right. Now, do you recall what the potential was in that diagram that he showed you the other day? What was the, the V? What did it do? What effect did it have on the, on the current? You guys remember? Yeah, but what, what did he use? So he had, that, he had that diagram that looked like this, right? Yeah. And then like this here, okay? And he said his I was kind of like the flow that goes through here, right? Mm -hmm. Which is what current is. It's electron flow. And then this right here was the resistance. So it affected it. By making it smaller, you, you essentially put some resistance on it, right? Well, what did he call the potential difference here? Remember? He, no. He, and volts. V equals IR, which is Ohm's law, which we'll get into eventually. But he referred to this as the pressure. That's the amount of pressure to get the water through there. That's kind of what he referred it to, is a potential difference acted like the, the pressure in the, in, the, uh, in the flow of the water or in the flow of the electrons, okay? So your potential difference is the amount of potential it takes to move one joule, it takes one joule of work to move one coulomb, one volt, okay? And then yesterday we looked at electric field intensity, And electric field intensity was how strong is that field around my point charge, right? So depending on how big that charge was and the amount of force around it, we could calculate what the electric field intensity was around that point charge. Okay? Today, we're going to calculate what we call potential gradient. No, no, it's not. Potential gradient, okay, is the same as electric field oh, intensity. Yeah. I knew one of them were the same. They're the same. Yeah. The only difference being the units are different. So to calculate what the potential gradient is, it's the amount of potential difference over the distance that it is actually moving. Okay. So potential gradient of an electric field is the change in potential per unit of distance. So that's how much the potential difference changes over the given distance. All right? So this one, all that's changing in this is units. They're equal to each other. The only difference being we measure that in volts per meter and that one in newtons per coulomb.
Okay, so far? All right, the last thing today, and then I'll let you go back to those questions. The last thing today I want to introduce is capacitance. <coughs> we talked about capacitance also in that solar panel. We talked a lot about capacitance. All right, because essentially what capacitance is, is it's a place to store electrons. That's where it is. So that's what a capacitor is. Now, when we attach that solar panel to the battery, the battery essentially is the capacitor. All right, so what a capacitor has is two conducting plates, generally opposite in charge, okay, and it has a dielectric material in, be in and around those plates. So if you were to open up a 9 volt battery, What you'd end up seeing is that there, two plates, one positively charged, one negatively charged, and an insulating material in there. Because that's what it is. That stores the it stores the electric charge and gives you the potential to do work. All right, gives you the potential to create a current. So we call this capacitance. So capacitance is essentially the ratio of the amount of charge to the potential difference. C equals Q over V. <coughs> the units for capacitance is the Faraday, named after Michael Faraday, famous physicist. All right. So one Farad would be equivalent to one Coulomb for every one volt. C is equal to Q over V. And this is where it all starts. The capacitor is what we store the energy in, the electrons in, in order to create your electricity. Create your electron flow. All right? Now, based on this here, which we call the dielectric material, so the difference between an energizer battery, a Duracell battery, a no-name battery. The difference between them is basically this type of material that they use inside here. And some store be electrons better than others. Okay, and that's what makes it different. Also, some are rechargeable, correct? And so that's what the difference is, is the rechargeable battery is that dielectric material inside those batteries. All right? Okay, that's all I have for today. Um, uh, for new stuff, you can continue to do all those questions um, on 393. I don't want to do that whole question for you, Brennan, but I'm going to show you for, uh, what happened. For six? For six, so, six that was a good question. Right. Oh, I don't, yeah, I think they are. Yeah. Okay. So, out of. Sorry? Yes. Not the charge, the force, Rory. You're right. Okay. So, I'm just going to I'm gonna give you the quick pro quo here, what, what happens. Okay. If I'm looking for the net force on A, I'm going to look at how B affects it, and then I'm going to look at how C affects it as if B wasn't there. So I'm going to find the force, and I'm using the same thing, KQ, Q, uh, KQ1, Q2 over D squared. Use it the same way. All right? So I'm going to find the force between A, B, and I'm going to write the direction in which that guy's going to move because of it. So which direction is A going to go because of B? To the right. To the right. And then I'm going to find the force between A and C, and which direction is it going to go because of C? 
Very good. Okay? Because it's attracted to B, it's going to go to the right. Because it's opposing C, it's going to go to the left. So when you actually find out the net force, you subtract the two. Okay? So if I was looking for the net force on B, I find the force AB, I find the force BC, write the directions out. Excuse me? Write the directions out. Does it give you anything about this too, so? Check again. 25 centimeters in diameter. Don't worry. <laughs> 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 again? Is that how that works? No. We really gotta keep a sound chart. <laughs> Go home this All right, you guys again. got the rest of the day at work. Brandon, you're going to come back in a couple years and you're going to set me in my place. I'm